Give me a good Jimmy Butler story. You got one? I mean, because he is one of the most fascinating to me um, superstars that got, you know, Bulls were at him, and then the Sixers had a shot. Obviously, Minnesota had him, and he's he's dominant. He can be as dominant as any superstar in this league, and and uh, he's, he's remarkable. The guy's remarkable. You got a good one for him? I, I don't have a specific Jimmy Butler story. I heard Jeff Teague tell a good story recently about that famed practice in Minnesota where Jimmy Butler with the G League Timberwolves just kicked the crap out of the starters, ripped off his (laughs) warm-up shirt to reveal a Minnesota jersey with the Minnesota cutout of the front of it, which is peak Jimmy Butler. What you know about Jimmy (laughs) Butler is that it takes a special type of coach and a special type of culture and a special type of roster to maximize him. Like, you put him on Philadelphia next to Joel Embiid, and he's great. Because Jimmy and Joel Embiid have the same mindset. Win-at-all-costs kind of mindset. Jimmy and Ben Simmons don't have the same mindset. And Jimmy was kind of ahead of the curve on Ben Simmons, kind of knowing that there was something (laughs) off. He was. Like, there was something a little bit off Mm -hmm. with Ben Simmons. But you put him in Miami, where Eric Spolster... Remember that scene late in the season this year? where Eric Spolster and Jimmy Butler were going to get oh, into each other. Of course. And Eric says, what, you want to fight me now? Like, <laughs> yeah. that's, the, that's Jimmy Butler. Like, but you have to have a coach that is willing to kind of brush that off. It's like, whatever. This is what happens. It's intense. Watch us in practice. Like, I, I think there's, you know, there's 30 teams in the NBA. Jimmy might not be able to play for 28 of them, no at kidding. least not at this level that he's playing at right now. He is in the perfect situation in Miami with that roster, with that coach, with Bam Adebayo, with the guys down there that play with an edge. And as long as he's playing at this level, you can't count Miami out. I mean, you don't really run plays for Jimmy Butler. Like Jimmy Butler just takes the ball and he's like, you know what? I'm better than these guys. I'm going to take it at these guys. I'm going to shoot mid-range jumpers on these guys. Like he just believes wholeheartedly that when he has the ball in his hands, he's better than the guy in front of him. Last guy that guy across the way wants to see in the Eastern Conference Finals. I was so him. happy that they, the Hawks beat them in the play-in, so they weren't the seventh seed. Yeah, to go against the Celtics. But... I wouldn't. I would not. I mean, everybody kind of attributes the Bucks' loss to Giannis's injury, and there's some truth to that. Look, he missed two and a half games yeah. in that series, but they won one of those games, right? And and they lost, and the Bucks lost all three that Giannis played in, that played any right. part in. So I don't know. I I can tell you that being around that Boston organization. They got the matchup they wanted in that first round. A little harder than they thought, having to go six games, but they got the matchup they wanted. And now, if you're if you ask them, the Celtics right now obviously focused on Philly, but they want the Knicks. Yeah, you want the Knicks. You'd much rather play the Knicks if you're the Celtics <laughs> than have to deal with that Miami team and that coach. I mean, I mean, Eric Spolstra versus Joe Mazzulla is a it's a tough matchup. Like Eric Spolstra's got it's experience. Not even close. <laughs> like Spolstra's so much a better. Why doesn't Joe Mazzulla call timeouts? That was a bad look. And I think Joe even admitted it afterward. But that was a bad look. Oh, like over t- uh, overtime, one possession, ball in the backcourt. I know you don't want Philadelphia to sub in some more defensive players, but you got to call time out there. You got to set something up. up. And then Tatum just stood there at the top. Uh, it was just. And then why why is Jalen Brown doubling off of Harden when he's been torching them all night? He admitted night? that was a mistake too. Like that was a whiff. I don't know that a timeout necessarily helps that, mm. but 15 seconds left, you got to call a timeout and run the play. You, it makes you wonder. Like, does Joe Missoula, do the Celtics have confidence that they're going to draw up the kind of play that makes the timeout worth it? Or is it better to just try to catch the Sixers, catch whatever team, backpedaling, not able to set their own defense? Maybe it's a calculation on their part that the way things are moving is better than if you call a timeout and drop your own play. It just further illustrates that Ime Odoka was the toughest guy on that team. Ime Odoka got a lot of that team. But look, if Joe Missoula wins the series... You got to give him credit for that, too. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.